Hi, my name is Jennifer Marenke from Penn State Hershey Medical Center. I'm pleased to be here with Dr. Nicholas Shaheen from the University of North Carolina. He's here today talking about his study in conjunction with Dr. Mimi Canto on the multifocal nitrous oxide cryoablation uh, with or without EMR for treatment of neoplastic Barrett's esophagus with, with video. Thanks so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Sure. So in the area of, I'm sorry, in the era of widely accepted uh, use of radiofrequency ablation for the treatment of dysplastic Barrett's. What was the impetus for studying cryoablation? Well, as you know, a fairly significant number of patients with Barrett's esophagus who are treated with radiofrequency ablation may have an incomplete response. Most studies show that somewhere in the neighborhood of at least 10, if not 2, if not 20 percent of patients may not achieve complete eradication of intestinal metaplasia. Now, there are a variety of factors that may cause that, but one right. thing that comes to mind is that perhaps these cells have different susceptibility to various modalities, and perhaps there's a subgroup that will respond best to something like cryotherapy. In addition, as you know, in order to perform successful radiofrequency ablation, it requires very tight apposition of the devices onto the tissue. And if you can't get that tight apposition, such as in the case of a baggy hiatal hernia, for instance, or a presbyesophagus, which is really bendy, you may not get good ablation. So it stands to reason that we need multiple modalities and that maybe one size doesn't fit all. So the cryoballoon was used for this study. What's novel about this device? The cryoballoon has a number of novel features. Unlike previous cryotherapy devices, this is a self-contained device whereby the gas does not ever get inside the patient. It's circulated inside the balloon and then drawn back out. So you don't have issues with distension or barotrauma as some previous devices have had and, and, and there's no need for decompression. The other really attractive thing about this device is that it's small and it's portable. It looks mm -hmm. like, a, as you can see from the video that goes with the paper, it looks like a little, uh, I don't want to say handgun, but it looks like it's a little device that's triggered with a, a trigger um, and has the catheter coming right off it. So we literally take it back and forth between multiple locations when we use it um, because we can, whereas we can't, it's much obviously more difficult with certainly a a uh, RFA console or a liquid nitrogen cryotherapy console, something that is big to be able to do that. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much for spending time with me to give me the premise for your study. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. We're continuing our discussion today with Dr. Mimi Canto from Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore uh, on her study, Multifocal Nitrous Oxide Cryoblation with or without EMR for treatment of neoplastic Barrett's esophagus with video. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Thanks, Jennifer. So how was your study carried out? Yeah, well, so we, um, we did consecutive patients who had proven Barrett's dysplasia, who um, really had never been treated before. Uh, and we actually go through uh, in clinic a discussion of the various options for treatment, mm -hmm. including RFA, including um, mucosal resection uh, for uh, any suspicious lesions. And um, we enroll them in the trial with the discussion that this is a novel therapy, hasn't been proven, and we um, let them know that this is really the first uh, feasibility and safety trial looking at this new modality. And I tell them about my experience with uh, treating patients with RFA, what the, the science, the studies show, it's very effective and safe. I also have um, a long experience with spray cryotherapy using carbon dioxide. Um, and so with that, we actually embarked on this trial that was the first time really that we could apply this novel technique where it's mm -hmm. balloon-based to see if we could completely eradicate Barrett's and um, prove what safety it has and what efficacy it might have for eradicating both dysplasia and all Barrett's. So in terms of your results, how many patients were included this in, in this study and what were your major findings? Yeah, so we, um, we enrolled uh, in parallel patients who had uh, never been treated for Barrett's with any ablation. Uh, of the 41 patients, there were about 22 that had, uh, were treatment naive. And we also enrolled patients who had failed or had resistant Barrett's esophagus who either had uh, more than three uh, sessions of RFA and still had um, uh, residual Barrett's who had 
dysplasia despite the treatment or had a complication like a stricture after RFA. And so what we found is that um, we were able to treat um, all patients except for one for technical um, difficulties. Uh, and um, in patients who had completely successful treatments, were able to achieve a complete eradication of their dysplasia in about 95%, wow. which is really impressive for the first time that yeah, we did this. Absolutely. And also complete eradication of their all their Barrett's in about 88%. Um, this is actually quite um, encouraging because this is, um, uh, again, for this new technique, because it's in the ballpark uh, range of efficacy that we would want um, to be close to where uh, be clinically acceptable close to where RFA um, mm -hmm. has been demonstrated. Um, the other thing that was very um, uh, important about this trial is we wanted to look at safety and certainly for those of us who also do cryotherapy for Barrett's, one of the big differences is that it's better tolerated. You know, we know that patients with RFA can get pain, um, mm -hmm. they have trouble swallowing, yep. we actually give them a dietary restriction, we give them narcotic analgesics to go home with sometimes. Uh, and with this study we actually proved that the pain is uh, really milder and is short-lived. It was solved very quickly. We hardly ever give narcotics. And so that's really uh, potentially a, a difference that might be proven uh, with um, compared to RFA, for example. So really, I think the tolerability of the, of the, of the treatment in this study was, was, was quite encouraging. Yeah. So in terms of you know, moving forward with this initial data, what further research would be required in your mind to have this sort of technology move to the forefront of treatment for Barrett's esophagus? Yeah, so we actually are in the middle of um, a multicenter American trial that's um, trying to reproduce or at least confirm the findings of this single center smaller study. Mm -hmm. uh, we hopefully will accomplish this in the next uh, year or so, improve eradication rates at one year, you know, standard endpoints. But then also we're, we would like to uh, have a head-to-head -head comparison in a either non-inferiority or equivalency trial with RFA, just to really show how they compare and how potentially where it would fit in, um, you know, in the treatment of Barrett's. We also have planned a, a separate trial that's for treatment naive patients for, with uh, patients who have resistant Barrett's with certain criteria that might benefit from an alternative uh, abundality and potentially reach um, CRIM in a, in a different way but sort of complementary treatments or multimodality treatments instead of just single therapy. Yeah. So based on this study, what's the bottom line and do you have any further thoughts? So the, the bottom line is it's, uh, it's really encouraging. I think that uh, with a new modality like this, we would like to in, in, you know, kind of expand our toolkit uh, for treating patients with Barrett's esophagus and it's really nice that this, this is an advance um, in, our, in our world and it'd be good to do the, the, the research and, and keep going. Great. Thanks so much for your time. It's a fascinating study. Thank you, Jennifer. Yep, you got it.